Welcome back, my friends, to an episode of TFT Hyperroll from Mission for Tuition. Mission for Tuition, it is about raising money for our son's middle and high school tuition because he needs to go to a special, very expensive school. This is not a beg for donations or anything like that. It's views. We're looking for more views. So help us get more views by helping the YouTube algorithm. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And with that said, let's get started. One of my favorite things to do in Hyper Roll, and pretty much in any form of TFT, but is to grab a champion with an item that will work on that champion. In this case, I happen to find a Ziggs with a needlessly large rod. He's an Arcanist. A needlessly large rod is an excellent item for Arcanist, so I like to get that combination together. Now we head into the first set of Augments, and they're a little bit of a head scratcher. Self repair is amazing. It's an awesome augment if you have scraps and innovators but i haven't seen any innovators no singed no ezreal so i'm not leaning that way i end up grabbing phony frontline because it's one of those that is pretty much always strong if you get it i then start finding more yordles but not enough to make a yordle team so it's time to lean into arcanist and at least trigger that buff and then see where it takes us and I know, I know, I can hear it now, people saying, Jeweled Gauntlet on Ziggs? Yes, it's actually pretty effective when he hits his ult. Granted, he doesn't hit his ult all the time, which can make it a little bit frustrating, but pretty much any good damage item on an Arcanist can be very effective. Next item shot gives me a chance at a tier of the goddess, which is what I'm going to grab. This is critical on pretty much any spell casting focus build, which if I go Arcanist or if I go Yordle, that's going to be the way. One of the things I like with Phony Frontline is when you have a really squishy spell casting team like this, the Phony Frontline allows you to at least hold them in place while your spell casters can finish them off. That's pretty much the case here as Iyawi gets pushed back and then stomped. I roll and find myself a poppy so I can finally make the Yordle buff, but this team is pretty weak. I just have two silver characters, my Twisted Fate and my Ziggs. My Ziggs got pulled by their Blitz, so didn't have much chance, and Twisted Fate just isn't strong enough to carry this yet, and Tristana, well, she's not going to make it either. Finding a Vex, I switch her out for Tristana because Vex is much stronger and also makes good frontliner, so maybe this can keep the heat off my backline. Give Ziggs a Spear of Sojin so that he's casting more often and hopefully we're good to go. What I decide to do at this point is instead of using Yordles as a Yordle generator, I decide to use it as a gold generator. So I sell the Tristana with the hopes of now going fully Arcanist and using the gold I get from creating more Yordles as a way to build up gold throughout the game so I can get the high cost Arcanist later that I'm going to need. Last season in Hyperroll, we were able to use Teemo to make some money. Uh, I think maybe this season it's just the Yordle build in general. After dispatching the NPCs, we are offered our second augment, and it's a quick choice over to Runic Shield since I've decided Arcanist is the direction I'm going to be going. Now I want to quickly show you something I like to do this season. Whenever I see a socialite, I pick them up and quick put them in so I can find out where that spotlight is going to be. That's important information for later and whether it's worth keeping them around. In this case, I see it's in that corner, which is always a valuable spot, especially in an Arcanist build where you're likely going to end up with Lux there, so I keep Tarek on the bench. So my goal here now, obviously, of course, is to keep winning if possible, but it is to use the Yordle buff to build up gold so I have more rolls so I'm able to get the champions I need. I'd like to two-star my Swain. Obviously, I'd like to get another couple of Terex if possible since that buff is going to be important later on. After the NPCs, I get a shot at a needlessly large rod, which I quickly take. I put the Hextech Gunblade onto Ziggs so that we have a little bit of healing coming in just to Ziggs and across the team. Then I also go ahead and put the Morella Namicon onto Vex. I like doing this because Vex's ult splashes damage to everyone around her and the Morella Namicon will essentially set them on fire and have anti-healing effects. 
Now that I'm in round six, it's time to start saving money with eyes towards round seven. That's where I'm most likely to pick up my far cost, which is Lux, and she's going to be the key to this build. That Katarina on the opposing team is also incredibly strong and assassinates enough of my team that it's easy for them to finish off Ziggs. What I'm looking for now is a nice power spike at seven. If I can pick up the Lux, I can take out the Poppy. I won't need the money generation anymore. I can take my second silver Ziggs and put him in and switch the Ziggs items over to Lux and it would give me six Arcanus along with that Malzahar. And again, critical, critical step in any TFT hyper roll matches. Call your friend at Riot. Tell them what you need. I needed effects, and then ultimately we need a Lux. So you have to make the call and then hope they can get over to their computer in time so that you can get exactly what you're looking for. Then you also have to make sure to ask for the right augments, because if you don't do that, uh, you might mess up. So I uh, wanted Spellblade, asked for Spellblade, and we get Spellblade, which is going to make our Arcanus even more powerful. With everything in place, we can now say goodbye to our little Yordle trick, take Poppy out, put Ziggs in, and now we're up to six Arcanus, which is going to make Lux's ults very, very powerful. We then run into a build that I honestly don't understand. They have a Lissandra with the Innovator emblem on them. And they also have a Seraphine, which means they were trying to head towards Innovator, but they don't have Singed, which would be an additional Chemtech plus Innovator. They've worked in a... Kaisa, but it just doesn't seem to fit into anything they were doing. I can only guess their friend at Riot wasn't at their desk. Now, if I were running Vex in more of a tank situation, I would grab the Dragon's Claw, but since I have so much arcane power, I decide to go with the Archangel Staff to make Vex more powerful throughout the match. I reforge the items that were on Swain because they didn't make any sense and then throw the additional tank item onto Vex. Get everything positioned so that I'm good to go into the next fight. Unfortunately, I ran into someone who was ended up positioned perfectly against me. They were able to keep me focused on their Lux on the far end of the screen and while their Lux wasn't doing any damage, their Janna with that Spear of Sojin is able to keep their Tristana completely alive who can destroy me. Now the one issue with the socialite buff is that it puts the spotlight where it puts the spotlight and you want to put your carry in it. So I have to keep my Lux in that corner because I want that 20% extra damage. It worked out great here. And with that we are into the top 4. Able to pick up another Yumi and it's time to put Yumi in which will also give us the academy buff along with Lux. They throw us one last item shop and the Chalice of Power is an easy pickup. Anything to put more power onto Lux is perfect. So we load up Twisted Fate with the Static Shiv and also move over Malzahar so he's getting the AP buff instead of Ziggs. Now here's the thing, I called this build out earlier because it didn't make any sense to me, and it still doesn't, but they got into the top four with it. I don't understand why they didn't keep Singed as part of their build just enough to have that innovator Scarab out there. It would have given them a little bit more tankiness, it may not have led to a win, but it certainly would have helped. This is the Yordle team that destroyed us earlier, and they had their Tristana positioned perfectly. Now their Tristana? Well, she gets it destroyed by my Lux. Why? It's because they also picked up the Socialite buff, which forced them to put Tristana into the corner that was opposite my Lux, giving me the victory over them. Then I go ahead after I'm done with this fight and check in with the other team. Their team with that overpowered Tristana is able to beat the innovator-ish team, which ends up leaving me as the victor. I guess I can't complain, I feel like I kind of backed into it through a lot of circumstances, but it went that way. Hope you enjoyed the video and have an absolutely awesome day.